Earlier this week, there was a very interesting debate between political streamer Destiny and the notorious right-wing flamethrower Milo Yiannopoulos. After a bit of a delay, I was able to catch most of the debate, and all I can say is, wow, it was a doozy. Now let's get the obvious out of the way first. Milo came to the debate intoxicated. I think that's why the debate was delayed, but I'm not entirely sure. That struck me as ridiculously disrespectful from someone that is canceled and doesn't get much time in the spotlight these days. The disrespect doesn't stop there, though, as Milo spent half his time hurling personal attacks aimed at Destiny, his wife, and their marriage. In what was supposed to be a real debate, it came off as next-level cringe. But before I go into the actual debate, I want to give a quick background on each of the participants for those that are not familiar with them. Milo Yiannopoulos is an alt-right political commentator who worked for Breitbart from 2014 to 2017. In 2022, he served as an unpaid intern for Marjorie Taylor Greene. He also worked on Kanye West's 2024 presidential campaign, but I believe he's been fired. Milo is known to associate with white supremacists such as Richard Spencer, an association that cost him the support of right-wing figures like billionaire Robert Mercer and Steve Bannon. Milo stood out from the crowd due to his inflammatory rhetoric and flamboyant style. For much of his public life, he was openly gay, though he now considers himself to be an ex-gay who is celibate. He also describes himself as a practicing Roman Catholic and espouses Christian nationalism, about which this debate was supposed to be centered. Destiny, whose real name is Stephen Bonnell II, is a political streamer on YouTube. Former StarCraft II streamer, Destiny was one of the pioneers of political streaming online. A flamethrower in his own right, Destiny was banned off Twitch for comments related to the BLM riots in Kenosha. Destiny claims he was a libertarian in his younger days, but he is now firmly in the liberal camp. Now, despite this standing, he is often at odds with members of the far left, debating them as often as he does those on the far right. If you're, more look at, if you're looking for more info on those two, you can find Destiny on YouTube or his website, destiny.gg. As for Milo, he's been canceled virtually everywhere, so I'm not even sure where you can find him these days. Your best bet is to try Google. All right, let's go over the debate. Sadly, there wasn't a lot of meat on the bone here as Milo's intoxication led to rambling and little coherent thought. He opened with attacks on Destiny's relationship, a common tactic of his opponents. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Look, there's basically about one in five people who are just not really all there and will kind of do whatever. But when you hand those people, those unstable and dangerous people, a victimhood script, when you give them a license to commit violence in the name of their supposed identities instead of giving them the treatment and the love and the prayers that they need, you turn those people into killers. You turn those people into uh, time bombs. And there used to be something in America that would protect against that. It was Christianity. It's outside the scope of our evening this evening to uh, prove or disprove the, the truth of Christianity or, or, or Christ or whatever. Um, but I'll, I'll make a few points. Um, there is no America without Christ. And the reason for that is that um, this is an intrinsically and fundamentally Christian nationalist uh, country, by which we mean it's built into the architecture of the nation. There's no getting away from it. You can lie about it. You can pridefully uh, claim that, you know, oh, you can be good people without Christ. You can't. Um, you're just inheriting uh, a system of good and evil from the culture uh, in which you grew up. I used to arguing for more freedoms uh, against conservatives on stage, but I guess that's where we're at right now with the conservative movement or whatever part of the conservative movement this is. Um, today, we've got viewers gathered from all across the world tuning in to a debate between me and Milo, where Milo is going to argue that we should turn the USA into an isolated, authoritarian, zealously religious country. I think that technology is the Pandora's box that has changed this country and this world forever, and I don't think we're ever going back to the days of public squares and mail service by horse. Cultural, cultural exchange is happening, whether you like it or not, quite literally at the speed of light. Even right now, potentially hundreds of thousands or even millions of people around the world are listening to me and Milo have this debate. The only way to, type this, to stop this type of cultural exchange is through the militant authoritarianism that Milo is talking about on this stage. That might be through his being against the First Amendment, that might be against his taking away of the Second Amendment, and that might be through the institution of a state religion. I reckon that we cannot close Pandora's box. 
Christian nationalism, as it stands today, isn't even a coherent ideology. Its proponents will argue whether there's an ethnic component, whether one needs to be Catholic or not, and whether one needs to even be a Christian or a supporter at all in order to idolize uh, somebody for a Christian nationalist ideology. How many more porn stars does Donald Trump need to work his way through behind his wife's back before Christian nationalists stop worshiping him as their savior? As small as Christian nationalism is as a movement, even with it being as small as it is, there is still endless mm. infighting. In fact, if you are to look back in history as far as Greece and Rome, you might say that history is really the story of how people like you, given undue influence and larger platforms than they deserve, um, continually express views that are so far outside of the mainstream and so out of step with what ordinary people think that you have to be regularly slaughtered and new governments have to be installed and coups have to be uh, 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 engaged in just to keep people like you in line because otherwise we'd all be dead. So I'm sorry, but I'm, not, I'm certainly not gonna take any kind of moral lectures from you on anything, but I've given you a few examples of why everything you just said is complete and absolute nonsense, but let me tell you, um, if your memory stretches back, uh, and as your university or educated person, it should be further than 1980, uh, yeah, you absolutely can put it back in the box, and we must, and we should, because otherwise America is done. From there, Milo babbled and uttered more nonsense, claiming he would prefer to live in the year 1200 rather than today. He made the common right-wing claim of a more, America's moral decay and how the country was in trouble. Ultimately, he offered little in the way of defense of Christian nationalism. Destiny countered Milo's nonsense fairly well. I share a lot of the same political positions as Destiny, so I knew going in I would agree with him more often. Unfortunately, Milo didn't give him much to debate. There just wasn't a lot of meat on the bone. This could have been a fantastic debate. I may not agree with Milo much, but the man knows how to talk. Had he been sober, I think we would have had a very interesting discussion. The banter between these two could have been fascinating. My own take is that Christian nationalism is just perpendicular to the ideas behind America. The First Amendment states that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. This is pretty clear cut and doesn't leave much room for interpretation. Anyone suggesting otherwise is arguing in bad faith. And if you had any further doubts on the Founders' ideas on the matter, look no further than John Adams, the second president. In the Treaty of Tripoli, he outright stated, The government of the United States of America is not, in any sense, founded on the Christian religion. So from the start, America was a Christian majority nation, but never a Christian nation itself. We didn't move away from being something we never were, but we are slowly moving away from being a Christian majority nation. And that is what the rise of Christian nationalism is really about. Much like the Great Replacement Theory, Christian nationalism is a backlash against changing demographics. The same Christians that wielded their religion like a hammer against other religions are worried about the same thing happening to them once they are in the minority. I also want to push back on the idea that without religion, you can't have morality. If the threat of punishment in the afterlife is the only thing making you act right, you're not a good person. You don't need religion to have a moral society. Morality springs from reason and conscience. One thing I did find interesting was Milo mentioning America falling apart due to its depravity in a similar manner to other empires in the past. This is ironic because the actual sin that threatens to topple this country is greed, something the right either completely ignores or tries to glorify. The idea that wokeness is what's ruining the country instead of a handful of billionaires and corporations is hilarious. Spare me your moral outrage until you can target one of the deadly seven deadly sins that is actually wrecking the country. After this performance, I have little desire to see any more of Milo's content. I do look forward to Destiny's next debate, though. He's one of the liberals' sharpest online voices offering detailed and fierce defense of liberal ideas. If you're looking for interesting debates and political discussions, Destiny is worth a listen. You'll have to sift through a lot of his streamer drama, but it's worth it in my opinion. And I can't recommend Milo to any conservative listeners. If you're looking for a good counterpart to Destiny on the right, Ben Shapiro is the one to watch. And that about wraps things up. If you enjoyed this video, check out my response to Patrick Beck David's comments on the four-day work week, or my reaction to Sam Cedar's call for a 90% top marginal tax income rate. But before you go, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're enjoying the content, please subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.